Hello, OK, this video is a short introduction to Russian society and the economy at the time which our course starts, which is 1855. Now, this opening picture is, as you can see from the top, was drawn in 1900 and it shows visually the kind of basic structure of the Tsarist um, social hierarchy. So at the top you've got the Tsar. Note, normally it's spelled Tsar, T-S-A-R, but sometimes you do see it spelled in this alternative way. Um, so underneath the Tsar and the aristocracy, you've then got the Orthodox Church, which is central to Tsardom, and then the Tsar's army underneath that. You've then got the middle classes, um, and then the largest by far proportion of people in Russia uh, were the peasants. And in fact, this, py this pyramid you know, will be much further at the bottom uh, than that. So it gives you a bit of a visual overview about what society was like in around 1900, as you can see from the top, and the start of our course. So, in terms of um, the elite to begin with, okay, at the head of society and head of government and also of the Russian Orthodox Church was the Tsar. And the picture, or the painting on the bottom left, is a coronation. I think it's Nicholas II. Um, and you can see that the Tsar has been placed there by God. He was believed he was appointed by God. And he has absolute power. Now, there are a few connections you can make with our current head of state, isn't there, King Charles III, as you saw the coronation, you know, the role of the church was crucial in his um, coronation process, although obviously our current king does not have absolute power. The Tsar does, and the Tsar can make any law he wishes to. Uh, he doesn't really require much advice. Um, and we see, you know, real powerful single party, single person uh, kind of governments under uh, this period. OK, he's assisted and helped by the nobility and the aristocracy. Uh, they make up around about one or two percent of the Russian population, which is fairly significant. And they are the big landowners. Um, they own estates. They've got country houses, um, etc, etc. And they basically implement the policies which the Tsar has passed because obviously the Tsar can't be all over Russia in one go. So they kill out the taxes for the Tsar, however, they don't pay the taxes themselves. They enforce the laws which have been made by the Tsar. Um, they provide the soldiers which the Tsar needs for his army. And of course, the aristocracy and nobility uh, make up the, the key positions in the army, you know, the kind of the, the top generals and stuff. Even if they haven't got the skills for it, it's all, all of this is based on. Who your family is and your family connections um just because you know your father was a general and was quite an effective general and you inherit um his position does not mean that you will be any good in those roles however russian society was built on this idea of um aristocracy tsardom and things you know things kind of being given to you due to your social kind of position a further element of Tsardom and a key feature of Tsardom is the Orthodox Church, the Russian Christian Orthodox faith. Uh, they are landowners themselves and own quite a lot of land across Russia. They are very keen supporters of Tsardom uh, and also they pay no taxes either. And of course, most Russians would go to the Orthodox Church and they'd hear the messages um, basically coming from the Tsar filtering down through the Orthodox Church. Okay. Um, there was a very small uh, middle class, a uh, merchant class in the towns and cities within Russia, uh, which it was really quite a tiny minority. Uh, very few Russians actually lived in any towns and cities. Uh, about one person lived in a town and city for, for 11 who lived in the countryside. Where to compare that to Britain at the time, it was one in two. So every person in the town had two people in the countryside. So you can see how much more urban Britain was in 1855 and how much more rural Russia was at this time. And so a very small kind of middle class um, group. The vast majority of Russian people were so-called serfs um, and they were the property of their landowners. So these are people that worked on the land and they were owned by the landowners. Um, serfdom is not quite slavery but it's you know, not a hundred percent better, it has to be said. It's very similar uh, to slavery in many respects. Here's a photograph showing a, um, a Russian peasant family. Uh, again, they'd all be in their Sunday best uh, for this photo, um, and you can see uh, how they were. 
Now, the serfs, they need permission to marry from their landowner. They could be bought and sold by the landowners. They could be beaten by their landowners at will. And they could be conscripted into the army at will as well. So they had very little personal freedom, the serfs. Um, and they spent most of their time farming the land owned by the landowners. The other half of the serf population um, were owned by the state and they lived in village communes called the Mia and they were overseen by village elders. Um, so again, they were, they were basically the property of the state as opposed to property of landowners. They may have had slightly better conditions, I suspect, because you know, the state you know, can't beat people in quite the same way uh, that the landowners could. And of course, these people had very little or any education. Most of them probably won't have left their village or the surrounding villages in their entire lifetime. So very um, and little incentive to actually do things differently to how has has been done in the past. OK, in terms of the empire, um, the society was very diverse with a great many nationalities within it. Only 55 percent of Russian empire was actually Russian. And the remainder, well, the two biggest groups within the Russian Empire were Ukrainians, who were about 22%, and Poles, who were about 8%. Um, and then in terms of other groups, again, much smaller numbers, but you had, and they're not all on here, there's so many of them, but you've got people like Latvians, Estonians, Jews, Muslims, um, Georgians, you've got various nomadic peoples who lived in places like Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan. And there were some Chinese that lived um, in the far east of Russia, as well as people from Mongolia. A whole variety of nationalities uh, within Russia. But the, the crucial thing is, is that that hierarchy was fixed. Uh, the vast, vast majority of Russian people uh, were serfs, either owned by the state or by the landowners. And very, very few kind of made, made it from like the peasant class to then become like a middle class person from the from the into the towns, it really was a fixed kind of hierarchy with little kind of social change or mobility. And therefore, in terms of the economy, compared to the West, like Britain and Germany, Russia was seen as being quite backwards. As I said before, it was mainly a rural economy. It was based on subsistence farming. So in other words, people just grew enough food to feed themselves. And so if you had a poor year of, you know, and you had famines as a consequence, there's very little mechanisation or fertilisers. Here's a picture I found showing some Russian peasants um, sowing uh, food. And you can see there's no mechanisation there. This picture could have been taken in medieval times, couldn't it? You know, with the horse, with a wooden plough, uh, people using a bucket um, to put the, um, the seeds into the fields. The main expo exports of Russia in this time was food, timber, coal and oil. OK, so again, these primary resources. Um, and Russia did have vast, in fact, still does have vast resources in these things, but they weren't properly exploited. Um, so, you know, large areas of Russia um, had lots of potentially very valuable resources which, which were not exploited. There's very little private enterprise or market forces in Russia. There was no incentive to modernise. The landowners didn't need to invest in uh, mechanisation for the farmers and stuff on their land because they grew enough to feed themselves and they could make themselves quite wealthy from the land that they had. There was no incentive to try and grow new crops or do things in different ways and very little incentive to industrialise as well. Um, hence why so few people lived in towns and cities and why there was so little mechanisation uh, or even kind of any kind of industrialization in Russia. So this was Russia in 1855. Uh, if you compare this to Britain at the time, which was in the middle of the Industrial Revolution, you had railway mania had taken place, um, mechanization of farming was developing. Russia does seem far more backwards uh, compared to Britain. So socially and economically, um, Russia was fairly fixed in terms of hierarchies and in terms of economic development, fairly poor.